Pues en esta temporada tan especial hemos llegado a nuestro homenaje a la música de cine y lo hacemos además en la figura del que es probablemente el compositor vivo más importante de los que se han dedicado a la música de cine y que además este año también él está de aniversario. Si nosotros cumplimos 100 años, John Williams, que es a quien nos referimos, cumple 90, los ha hecho en febrero. Así que una institución, una verdadera institución de la música en general, porque ya su música trasciende al mundo cinematográfico. Nacido en Nueva York y tras, se trasladó a Los Ángeles muy joven y allí con su familia que siempre se dedicó a la música, sus padres tocaban en las orquestas que grababan las bandas sonoras en Hollywood, él enseguida ya empezó a formar parte de niño casi en, en grupos de jazz tocando el piano y ya comenzó a, hacer su, a tener sus experiencias como, como músico de estudio eh, poniendo la música a muchas películas y de ahí a la composición y a sus grandes relaciones con Steven Spielberg bueno, con, con Lucas, con todos los grandes de, de, del cine de los años 70, 80, 90 y hasta nuestros días, porque él sigue componiendo y sigue, su música sigue viva. Y vamos a hacer un monográfico, para ello contamos con nuestro director titular, Eric Nielsen, que has pensado en hacer su música de cine exclusivamente, porque había también la idea de podríamos hacer alguna de sus piezas de concierto. Hace años la orquesta tocó el concierto para trompa, y además fue un estreno en Europa, pero en esta ocasión hemos querido homenajear ¿no? a su música de cine. This was for for us to be kind of a gala of, of the music of John Williams, and of course we could have done a concerto, but, but uh, he has so much uh, symphonic music. I mean, it's cinema music, but it's really symphonic. Mm -hmm. And so we felt that, that was, there was so much contrast we could already build in a program that it was just enough. This is really our chance to uh, invite the audience to come. It's a more popular program, but uh, it's so wonderful to work on the details with, with an orchestra and this music because there's, there's so much to be discovered and uh, it's worth every bit of effort to put, put a program like this together. Porque algunas veces eh, estos programas de música de cine se hacen con un ensayo, dos ensayos rápido, porque es una música que todo el mundo conoce, pero lo estamos trabajando como si estuviésemos haciendo una sinfonía de Beethoven, no toda una semana de, de ensayos intensos. Es una semana completamente normal. Empezamos el Monday morning. Tuesday, today es Tuesday. It always gets better every day. It's always so exciting to see how um, how the boss progresses every week. It's always a, a, a for me a little a lo, kind of a miracle as a conductor <laughs> with any orchestra really because it's always so of course we can say we work in the the uh, rehearsal but but I always believe that most of the progress that an orchestra does is actually sleeping overnight just letting the music go in the brain and then the next morning it's just that you come as a different person mm. and that's actually where how, how the work mm. is for an orchestra yeah. y el recorrido por las obras de John Williams Primera parte, empezamos con la fanfarria olímpica sí, yeah. y seguiremos luego con las bandas sonoras. ¿no? We, we start with the Olympic fanfare, we're going to go to the, uh, um, to the uh, close encounters of the third kind. Which en, is a quite, encuentros en la tercera yes, fase. Yes, which is uh, closer style to Ligeti, mm. but I want to be clear that I don't like it when people say, oh, John Williams stole from this and he's a he took mm. from Korngold and stuff, because If you really look at music in general, it's always one huge continuum and every composer is taking from style. So it's not fair to say that. But anyway, the, it has a very different world. It's a very alien world. Mm. And uh, then we're going to also uh, perform the music of Harry Potter, which is, of course, a different, uh, different world entirely. Mm. Jurassic Park, dinosaurs. Mm. Uh, um, it's interesting, the one piece on our, the whole program that's actually about a human being is of course the Schindler's List. We have a wonderful mm. Enrique Palamas is going to play, uh, um, and that's really about really human beings. No aliens, no dinosaurs, no spaceships, and that's a that will be a wonderful moment in the program. And then of course the second part is the, the Star Wars. Star Wars que se le dedica una o la gran parte del programa, no una suite de de varias de. It's difficult with Star Wars because of course nine films, and if you do all the suites, then you have even more characters. You know, in, in the last three films, you have Rey, you have the Jedi, steps, the different light motifs. That the way he builds the Star Wars is is a, a, of course it's impossible to do in one program. But the way I put it together, the, this program, the suite. We do the main Star Wars suite, but then I put in some music from the other suites, and that, that kind of completes the idea more. Porque se dice, los especialistas en la música de John Williams hablan de hasta 60 late motifs en toda la saga, ¿no? Yeah. Es algo wagneriano casi yeah, esto. Yeah, yeah. Uh, apropos Wagner, because we, uh, um, 
Next, uh, next month we play the Siegfried, the third act of, of, the, of, of the Ring Cycle. And um, that is a very special moment in Wagner's composition because he took a break. He, mm. he was composed first and second act of Siegfried, almost to the end of the second act. And then he stopped and he wrote Die Meistersinger von Nuremberg, and he wrote Tristan und Isolde, and he wrote a lot of very boring books that nobody wants to read, <laughs> but he just kind of needed to think more. And then he came back 12 years later and wrote this fabulous ring cycle, the third act of Siegfried, where all the light motifs, he just takes them where they were 12 years ago, but it puts them together. Mm -hmm. And this same thing happens for me and John Williams, because we have 1977 Star Wars, and then The Force Awakens in 2015, so what, 38 years later. But John Williams, in this, this scherzo for X-Wings is what it's called, uh, he takes his old themes and just, just like, like Wagner, manages to put them together and he uses them differently in, in, a, different, in, in a different context, in more counterpoint, more, more like Bach, yeah, Bartok. And it, it's, it's a very, for me, it's just this, this idea that how, what does a composer do with the same material being 38 mm. years older, mm. yeah? Mm. It's incredible, yeah, yeah. Pues ahí lo veis, John Williams totalmente inserto en la historia de la música ya, yeah. un compositor vivo pero que tiene sus raíces hasta en las tradiciones wagnerianas. Y, y bueno, pues un hombre que respira música por todos los poros de su piel, así que vamos a escuchar sus melodías inolvidables, Jurassic Park, de Harry Potter, la fanfarria olímpica, E.T. E.T. también, el E.T., el extraterrestre para terminar, y por supuesto la Guerra de las Galaxias también, la, la larga saga, y encuentros en la tercera fase, en fin, casi todo, no, no casi todo porque es inmensa, pero lo, mucho de lo principal de su filmografía lo podremos disfrutar este jueves y este viernes en esta noche con John Williams en los conciertos de abono de la voz. <música> 